Welcome to another exciting edition of Montage, a lifestyle show for men and women who enjoy food, fashion, fun, and inspiration. I'm your host, Stephanie Sutton. We're gonna kick off today's episode with closet cleaners. Now it's hard to figure out what to wear when the weather is so back and forth, so that's why we have our fave stylist here, Shayla Courtney, to determine how to wear your outfits in cold weather and warm weather. It's Shayla Courtney, your fave stylist, and I'm here with Harvest today. We're going to take a look at a couple items in her closet. Harvest, do you have an item in your closet that maybe you need help transitioning it with looks? Yes, I do. Shayla, this is an outfit that I got, and I, I like it a lot. It's a really nice dress, and I feel like it's really versatile, but I just need some help figuring out what to do with it. Okay, let's get it on you and let's play with it a little. We'll take it from warmer weather to cooler weather. Okay, Harvest, so for warmer weather, this dress is such a pretty color and I left you with a, some nude accessories. So we have a long hanging necklace, we did a snakeskin leather belt, and we did a nude colored bracelet. It ties in well with that color, and you actually can still transition this into cooler weather as well if you throw on a brown jacket. Okay Harvest, so for cooler weather, all we're going to do is just add a jacket, and even though we're covering up the ruffles, that's what really made me want to bring up the jewelry a notch. So I added this really pretty silver necklace really detailed little silver bracelets and have some stones on them kind of brightens up the outfit this look is really perfect for also going from day to night because you could go out with your girlfriends or a happy hour and the dressy accessories definitely make you look like you were ready for nighttime anyway if you need more tips on how to transition your wardrobe from cooler to warm weather visit my website at www.shaylacourtney.com now when you think about beauty, you think about glitz and glam, but today it's all about the fellas. We sat down with a local barber who discusses everything from how to keep your hair cut crisp to the most requested haircut style. And he'll give you a hint, it's a famous singer from the Atlanta area. John from the Virginia Hair Company and today we're going to talk about beauty but for the men mm -hmm. we call that grooming. Mm -hmm. So talk about how important grooming is for men. Well grooming affects all aspects of our lives. Um, you know anywhere from job interviews to, to, to meeting women to going to church you know I mean, everything we do revolves around grooming like nobody really wants to talk to anybody who's not kept. Now here at the Virginia Hair Company you all specialize in many different things. Talk mm -hmm. about what you all specialize in. We cut, we we do the, uh, the the weave, we do the dreads, we do we, we do all types of hairstyles here. So I mean anything that that you may want so far as your hair is you know is being done, you know we we, we will do it here. Okay. And talk about some of the things that men have to think about when it comes to grooming. I know there's a lot of different aspects. So explain some of those to our viewers. So far as the uh, the conditioning of the skin and the scalp is important because that, that that's the basis of where you know the hair goes out. Of course, it's the skin. So. We just have to um, to take and take that in consideration and, and just keep conditioning and moisturizing, hydrating our skin. And I know we talked about before we were kind of off camera and talked about, you know, there's a lot of other things that some men don't pay attention to, like the nose hairs, so right. the ear hair. Right. I mean, you all, that's, that's kind of something I'll take mm -hmm. care of. Yeah, right. Right. yeah. We, we will. You know, a lot of barbers don't want to do that, but we, we, we will, you know, go inside the nose and clip the nose hairs and, you know, the ear hairs and that type of thing, you know. But I mean, it's something that we can take care of at the, at the house too. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, it's not um, a uh, an issue. So once we, once we get to the barber shop or the beauty salon, right. then it's it's already taken care of, and you don't have to be talked about. You know, but yeah, it's it's, so it's, it's good to. So keep a lot that. of guys might come in here Friday night to get fresh for the weekend. Mm -hmm. 
Now talk about the experience that you provide for your customers. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of clients come in here with pictures. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of that. Really? You're right. A lot. Do that? Yeah, guys do that. You know, they, they come and say, ah, I, say, I want this, I want this, I want this. And, you know, and I'm like, okay, I'll do that. Because, you know, it's a lot of them have a hard time explaining from the chair what exactly needs to be done. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's it, like it, a, a visual. A visual is always better than anything else. So if they see it, then it's like okay. Then you know, most of the time it's a different, it's a different head shape yeah. than what the person wants. So we have to kind of mold it into what they want, right? But you know, we, we do that too. So I mean, I thought we were like we were the only ones. No, you know, like that, guys. Bringing a picture like I want my hair like no. so and so. So y'all, you have dudes coming here mm -hmm. bringing pictures with like Laz Alonzo mm -hmm. and all, all that people. stuff. Usher, what? the, the most popular, popular the, the most popular ones, Usher. But you have to have, like you said, the right head shape. So it's not gonna look like Usher. Uh -huh. I, I can make I, I can make it usher ish. I can I can do usher ish. You know, it'll, it'll, it'll look in <laughs> right. <laughs> usher ish. <laughs> hey, be quiet over there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now when guys, you know, so when guys come in here, you know, they get their their hair cut and their hair done, and I know sometimes the beauty salon, you know, some, there's certain things we don't want other women to see. So you have guys in here. Kind of might get embarrassed about the hairline or something just doesn't look right you ever have that, that well, kind of thing do guys get embarrassed well they they do it's, it's like the dandruff, I, I would say, it would be the number one thing guys would get embarrassed because of the black cape. <laughs> and all the so all, all the white flakes on a black cape, you know, the big flakes on a black cape, it's not a good look. So, yeah. you know, a lot of times when it gets that bad, I'm like, let me go ahead and wash this. Mm -hmm. See, so that, that's what, because a lot of times, a lot of that stuff is, is real, you know, gets real caked on sometimes. So we have to go back and we have to wash that stuff out. So what you do know? you do for a guy who might have dandruff heavily? Mm -hmm. What do you do to prevent that? Well, what, tips can they... well what, I, what I do, I tell them, I say, look, you have to, you have to um, like moisturize your skin and your scalp. You know, and then that starts with, you know, um, the proper wash. The proper wash, you have to wash your hair right. Mm -hmm. What's yeah. the proper wash? Well, the proper wash, I would say, I would say using a comb or a brush, comb through it when you're washing it. That way, if you use a small tool comb, you're pretty much zapping out. You know, the, 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 whatever is inside your scalp, whether it's, it's, it's dry scalp, dandruff, whether it's dirt, whether it's soot, whether it's any of those things, you know, a comb will pretty much get that, especially if you have longer hair, if you have like a, like a short afro type of thing, you really kind of need like a small tooth comb with water, so it'll, it'll, um, it'll, it'll moisturize the, um, the hair. Okay. So the comb will run right through it, depending on how nappy your hair is, you know, or how coarse, <laughs> not nappy, but coarse your hair is. For more male grooming tips from John, log on to www.redellengroup.com. It's food fight time. Now, Icebreaker Chef Mark Conway is going to show you how to make chicken, blueberries, and sweet tea, yes, all those combined, to a tasty dish. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Chef Mark, and today we're going to have some fun in the kitchen again. We're going to do a play on a chicken dish that will serve over sauteed vegetables, but it's here's the kicker. It's going to have a blueberry chipotle sauce. I'm going to give you a second to digest that. Yep, blueberries, chipotle peppers, chicken. It's going to be awesome, trust me. So the first thing we're going to do is get everything put together. We've got some onions. We got some chicken we got from the store, blueberries, and in here are our chipotle peppers. And what a chipotle pepper is, is basically it's a roasted jalapeno in an adobo sauce. And what we did with them was I pull them out of the can and I take out the ribs and I take out the seeds because that's where a lot of your capsaicin is, which is a lot of your massive heat. And so it becomes a little more mild, but gives it some really good solid body. So we'll take our onions and our chipotle, we're going to dice these up. Now, blueberries. If you live next to a place where you can go and pick blueberries, do that. Take your kids, have a great time, and if I can get one thing for you to try, in addition to trying some of these food and these recipes and using fresh ingredients, cook with your kids at home. You want them to try new foods? Have them a part of it. It's one of the reasons I started using a lot of fruit in my food is because that's what my toddlers know. They know fruit's okay. They know fruit is good. So when they see you put blueberries in, something they know, they're a lot more apt to try it and then you end up with a very happy child instead of a child yelling for a chicken nugget. All right, so what we're gonna do is take this over here, add just a little bit of salt, again, not too much, a little bit of pepper, 
and we're going to get this on the stove top and all we're really trying to do is start to get these ingredients to cook and incorporate down together. Now the nice thing about a blueberry is a blueberry is actually going to break down much like a tomato does, much like a um, any of your other really juicy fruits. Strawberries do the same thing, so they almost become their own sauce. You really don't have to do too much. You can just let that blueberry cook down in and it's really going to start to incorporate a lot of great flavor. So you'll have the sweet depth of flavor that a blueberry has with that rich smoky chipotle heat and then some nice sweet onion there to kind of tie it all together. Now well, we're going to let this sit about a medium high heat to get started. I'm going to take a few pieces of chicken. I went with a chicken that I found on sale and it just happened to be our little tenderloin cuts which is going to work really nice for this. All right, now you've got chicken. And again, all we're gonna do is get this chicken down. Notice I kept this hand on the knife, this hand on the chicken, so I have a free hand. You don't want chicken fingers all over anything else unless you're getting it out of a frozen bag, and I hope you're not eating that after this. Season this up a little bit. We've already got some pepper in the grinder there. And our chicken's ready to go, so now I'm gonna move over and check and see where our sauce is at. Give it a good stir. And as, as you'll notice in here, what you'll start to see is those blueberries are starting to become a really deep, elite, deep blue color. And now we're gonna have those cooked down in. Your onions are starting to take on some color. The chipotles are starting to incorporate in. Now you're starting to get a really nice dish out of that. So now we'll take our cutting board over, which is the easiest thing to do, and we're gonna dump this right into our pot with our chicken. And just slide it right off there. Put this back down a second and give all this a good stir. Now again, another staple I like to use in the kitchen, can't tell I was spent any time in the south, spent a lot of years in Florida, is sweet tea. So I'm going to grab my sweet tea that I always have around the kitchen, add just a little bit in here which is going to give some moisture and help the chicken not dry out because that's a big problem you run into with chicken. Sweet tea helps that because of the herbs from the tea and the sugar in the sweet tea. So now at this point, you're just keeping your food on the heat here, keeping your meat going, keeping it stirred, and you're just gonna let all of this cook down and incorporate in with one another. And then we'll start after it's done and it's cooked through and you'll have that nice opaque color, which will have some blue in the chicken. Don't be afraid, that's what you want. We'll go ahead and start getting our sauteed vegetables together. So we'll be right back with that in a moment. All right, now we're over to our pan. We're just gonna put just a little bit of olive oil down. Nice thing about olive oil, it has a nice flavor. It's not real bad for you, but always keep in mind, it has a very low smoke point. So if you get that pan too hot, you're gonna smoke out your whole kitchen. And I'm not talking from experience at all. All right, got our burner going. Going to go to about a medium high to get started because I really want that pan to get a good heat temp. And then we're just going to start putting our veggies and fruit in. All right, set this back down. And I'm going to, again, I want to cut down on my dishes. So what I stirred my chicken with, I'm going to go ahead and stir my veggies with. Can't hurt to get a little bit of that blueberry sauce on there as well. Hit it with just a little bit of salt. That helps break the fibers and tissues down inside your produce, a little bit of pepper. But again, I don't like to use too much salt because really vegetables and fruits have a great flavor all of their own. You don't need to pack it full of salt. And as you can see, we've got our chipotle chicken. It's really cooked down nicely. It's in a nice thick sauce. And your kids are gonna love that because it's blue. How often do your kids love those bright colors, love those vibrant things, and that's what all the TV shows and everything attract to is bright colors. Now you're gonna put chicken on their plate that's blue, they're gonna love it. Your apples will work a lot like an onion does, and you'll see that I use a lot of apples in cooking because it does pretty much the same thing. Onions add sweetness or bite, depending on which color you use. They can also add a little bit of a crunch. Your apples can do exactly the same thing, but just add it from a different perspective. So don't be afraid when you see apples on sale, grab a bag of them and try them in some of your dishes. So once you're about ready, you can grab, you go ahead and grab your bowl. And I like to plate these in a bowl because it's going to be a very hearty dish. So we'll come right over here. 
I've just picked a basic bowl, really anything will do. I'm gonna scoop out some of our veggies. Put that right here in the bottom. And we can turn off our heat here. And now once you've got that nice base here at the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and add our chicken mix right to the top. And there we go. Another take on a classic, say, chicken pasta dish. Instead, we're using uh, veggies and fruits as our base and chipotles and blueberries for the sauce. So you're gonna have a fun dish. It's gonna have a little heat. It's gonna have a little sweet, but it's gonna be a ton of fun. Your kids will love it. Your family will love it. Make sure you cook with family and friends as often as possible. Don't leave the kids out, and we'll see you next time. What's one of the top things that people do after work? Is it A, more work, B, workout, or C, happy hour? If you guess C, happy hour, you are correct. That's why we have Do It On The Dimes, Daryl Dwayne here to show you how to keep your hour happy right at home on a budget. Welcome to Do It On A Dime with Daryl Dwayne. And we are here to talk about happy hour. How many of us like happy hour? I mean, I, mean, I do. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the happy hour experience and bring it home. We start off with snacks, because of course you need snacks with your spirits. And what we opted to do was we found this in the dollar store. This is a seed grower. So you essentially will place your seeds in here and allow them to germinate if you want to start your garden. But instead of doing that, we're going to repurpose this and we're going to use this as our snack holder. So we have our little compartments here in the center of the tray. We have our snacks, as you see, laid out here. And this can get messy to try to bring all this out and have it in separate dishes. So we're going to take all of our snacks and kind of condense it into a one-stop shop. Now, presentation is everything, I admit that. But being a guy and a man's man sometimes, you know, it's not always about the presentation because at the end of the day, we're going to consume these snacks and be done with it. So, once you have your snack tray set up, you want to definitely place this out for your company to partake in and to dip freely as they would like. Of course, now that we have the snacks part done, we would like to add a little bit of alcohol to this party because after all, a happy hour isn't really happy unless you have spirits. So let's turn it up a bit. All right, so now that the snack portion is finished, let's get to my favorite part, the drinks. So we can't have a happy hour without having drinks. And we talked to our in-house mixologist, which happens to be me. And we're going to, oh, I should say I, crafted two really easy peasy uh, drink concoctions that will work well with your guests. Now, I'm going to start it off light because, again, you know, we tend to enjoy our female company as well as our having our guy company over as well. And if we're going to have females at the party, we want to make sure they have drinks that they're going to love. So this one is a special one just for you ladies. And here we have sparkling wine. Who doesn't love sparkling wine? To be honest, I kind of love it myself. So, we're gonna just kind of fill those glasses up about midway. Sparkling wine. Right. Now, as we fill these glasses up, I just wanna highlight again, this is do it on a dime. So, if you're looking to save money, Again, you can find some sparkling, really inexpensive sparkling wine at um, a local gas station. I mean, to be completely honest, because we're going to mask that with this really, really flavorful sparkling water. Now, you're thinking sparkling water? Trust me, this brand here, which can be found at your local dollar store, has a lot of flavor to it. So, despite the fact that it is flavored sparkling water, it will add a subtle little boost to your drink and give you a little more flavor, a little more pop. Plus, it's really pretty, and we all know girls love pretty. So, with that being said, you wanna fill up the glass the rest of the way with your sparkling flavored water. And this brand here happens to be ice. As I said, you can find this at your local dollar store. And once it's all complete, you have something that's light, refreshing, but still has a little kick to it that the ladies will enjoy. And even some of the fellas, not bad. 
So, now that we've gotten the light drinks out of the way for those light drinkers, let's get to the good stuff. Me, I'm a tequila man. So, I like my drinks to hit hard. So, we're going to start with tequila. Here, I have just a simple glass of ice, and we're going to add some shots of tequila. So, we have shot one, and shot two. And we're going to then add a little bit of grapefruit juice to that. The grapefruit juice is really, really good at masking how hard the tequila can cut. So we're going to just add a little bit of, OG, a little bit of uh, grapefruit juice and then add a splash of OJ to it. And that kind of makes it a little sweeter. And before we do any last garnishings or finishing garnishings on the drink, this is do it on a dime. So you may not have a shaker at home. You might be thinking, well, how can I make my mixed drinks without a shaker? We got you covered. Take a traditional or good old dollar store plastic tumbler and take it, place it over your drink, over your cup. You wanna make sure that you press really hard on the bottom of your cup as you place the tumbler over top and flip it, flip it back, flip it, flip it back. You have your drink. Shaken, not stirred. And then to top it off with a nice garnish. Add a little bit of grenadine there for color. It's also very flavorful. And, you know, it actually is quite an attractive looking drink. Plus, girls love pretty as well, as I spoke to earlier. So this might be a drink that you might be able to convince your female company that's joining you for happy hour to also partake in. So we have our snacks, we have our drinks. And the cool thing about this is if you're not a heavy drinker, you can still enjoy happy hour without having to maybe have the alcohol. We can always replace the alcohol with maybe club soda um, and or uh, a ginger ale to give it a little bit of pop. And you have it, happy hour at home all under budget. For those of you who are really watching your budget, you don't have money to maybe get a big bottle of Jose Cuevo like myself. You might want to use the mini bottles. The mini bottles tend to run at most uh, most locations about a dollar to a dollar fifty, and um, they're already pre-measured. So two bottles of that, and you have a montage manager or a SLS sipper, which is what I'm going to title these drinks. So copyright laws, if any of you use my drinks in the world bars of yours, I want you to give me my props. But nonetheless, enjoy and make sure you tune back in for more tips here at Do It On A Dime with Dara Dwayne. Okay, talk to you later. Today's montage moment is the second part of our exclusive interview with author and philanthropist Rob Hill Sr. See what the heart healer has to say. Um, and for anybody who has an opinion about Steve Harvey, you know who Steve Harvey is. Whether you like him or not, he's accomplished some things that we all hope to accomplish, whether it's charity, professionally, comedy, whatever. Um, Tony has also accomplished some great things. Um, and, you know, these, these are people I respect. Uh, I do feel like I am different. Um, but that's because How? my life has been different. Okay. Um, I, we get to a point in our careers or in our life when we're somebody that people listen to to where we're only transparent about our yesterdays and I'm very transparent about my today I'll tell you what I got wrong today I'll tell you what I'm still trying to get right today and I never want to be the guy who can only talk about the yesterdays because he's too busy trying to hide what's going on right now I'd rather share it because me admitting that I have a problem it, 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 it gives me opportunity to have solutions, or at least find them, or at least meet somebody who may have had that same problem. But if I keep trying to mask it like I know it all, I'm a self-destruct. Yeah. Now we talk about, we, we joke about it, like how powerful you are on the internet. You can literally put the sky is blue and you'll get like 10,000 likes. Oh my God, I needed that <laughs> message today. Do you ever think some of the stuff that you put up, even if it's one word, do you sometimes get a kick out of it, like, 
really, it really wasn't that deep, but people write paragraphs under your, your pictures and uh -huh. retweet your stuff. Do you ever think certain things are just so crazy when you didn't even mean it to be that deep? I mean, first, I don't think I'm that smart, first of all. <laughs> I'm able to articulate things that people feel um, in a simple manner that they get it. Um, sometimes I'm like, I didn't even mean that, but I'll take it, you know? Um, in a way, what it is, is just a testament to my consistency and also to the, the uh, effectiveness of the message. It is, you've been so good um, consistently to where everything you do has to have meaning to us. You know, and, and even if you're not saying it does, I'm looking for it because you are where I go to get answers or you are where I go to feel better. That's an honor, you know what I mean? Like in a way, I'd be like, I would be a fool if I said, don't look for nothing else, you know what yeah. I mean? Like granted, sometimes it's like, hey, this is what I meant, take it for what it is. And other times people see it, but it's, it's all of our experience um, kind of tailors our perspective. So while I may just be saying like, go forward, you know, and they be like, yeah, I have been waiting <laughs> for too damn long. Or right. I've been sitting in this same spot, so I gotta go forward. Rob gave yeah. me permission, now I give myself permission. And I'm like, you didn't need me. I, you, I mean, it, it comes off on the internet, it's like, you're like the gospel to women, you know? Like, <laughs> really, it is. And a lot of guys are like, man, Rob don't know what he's talking about. Rob mm -hmm. is this, Rob is that. Like, where do you think that comes from? Well, it's the guys, the ego is, listen, if you would have asked me five years ago to read a self-help book, I would have said, hell no. Right. I got it. <laughs> I know what I want. I know who I am, blah, 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 all that stuff. Guys aren't, you ask a guy how to get from point A to point B, and he's like, yo, follow these directions. I'm like, nah, I know where to get. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. say it's a detour, he's gonna be lost. But he's a guy, so he doesn't need directions. We don't need mm -hmm. instructions. When we build something, we don't, you know, so we're, we're, we're kind of conditioned to feel like we gotta act like we know it all, mm -hmm. or we gotta act like we got it together and needing help. Weak men need help, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or lost men need direction. And I'm kind of like, Nah, we can save ourselves a lot of time if we start communicating these problems, if we start speaking up when we don't know where to go. Because getting lost wastes time. Yeah. You know what I mean? It takes time. Yeah. So if, if, if I'm willing to say, hey, have you been down that road before? What's down there? You know, is that somewhere I should go based off where I'm trying to get to? If we were able to do that, I think that we would get a lot further, a lot faster. Now, do you think you use some of your message to kind of reach out, like um, kind of subconsciously or indirectly to men? Because you know, men, you know, you're not supposed to be emotional, you know, mm -hmm. you can't cry, you know. So a lot of men look at like, oh, he's he's being like Drake, he's he's mm -hmm. soft or whatever. You know, do you do you think some of your message are indirectly trying to target men to open up more or express themselves? I don't think I have a gender specific message. Mm -hmm. um, I just think women naturally seek answers. Uh, a little more eagerly than men. So it's, you know, 80% of readers are women, you know? So it's a natural thing being an author, you're gonna have that women audience. What I try to do is help people who wanna be helped or give a new perspective to people who are looking for one, you know? That's all you can really try to be. I can't tailor my message to one gender or, or, or try to just, hey, men, think I'm cool. Hey, think I'm smart, you know what I mean? Come to me to get your manly answers. <laughs> no, no, you, you want it or you don't. And I'm comfortable either way, you know, because a lot of times, well, before, I didn't want answers from, from guys anyway, you know? So I can't, I'd be fooled to think like, y'all should come to me. I'm a guy's guy, you know, no. Check out our full exclusive interview with Rob Hill Sr. on www.redellingroup.com. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Montage. As always, you can find more information about the show and see previous episodes on our website listed below. And make sure you follow us on social media. We'll see you next time.